My name is Lissa Casey, L-I-S-S-A-C-A-S-E-Y. I represent Ammon Bundy. We received permission from the Multnomah County Jail uh, to record phone calls that we make to him on an attorney-client line that's not recorded by the jail. Um, however, we have also received permission to um, make portions of those conversations public. We can't facilitate a third party being on the line. We are the only ones allowed to be on the line. However, we did record a portion of the statement uh, uh, of the conversation that we had with Ammon this morning. Uh, we've received a copy of a one count indictment. The only material addition to that indictment is that there were names added to it, including the four remaining protesters remaining at the refuge. Uh, David Fry, Sean and Sandy Anderson, Jeff Bantos, and then additionally there was a man, Kenneth Mendenbach, on the indictment. He was arrested in Burns for uh, driving a, a government vehicle. Ammon was not allowed to be in court yesterday. We're currently investigating the efforts that the government took to keep him from being at that court appearance and preventing his access to the courts. It's a big problem that an accused political protester who already mistrusts the government is prevented access to his courts as the federal prosecutors are speaking about his case. There is no court proceeding too insignificant or mundane for Ammon to attend. The irony here is that the government had already attempted to restrict his liberty by re preventing his release, the reasoning being to allow him to go to court appearances, and then the very next court appearance they kept him from attending it. Political protesters need access to the courts. Mr. Bundy wishes to thank the over 230 supporters that have contributed to his funded justice site for his defense, and the funding will also go for experts, investigative fees as well. Those donations have ranged from $2 to $1,000, and he appreciates every one of them. He hopes to honor their contributions by taking his fight to the courts. The Funded Justice website can be found at arnoldlawfirm.com. We have a link to it at our website. The phone call that I'm about to play is uh, right after we informed Ammon of his indictment, since he was not allowed to see it yesterday. We advised him of his rights to remain silent, but he continues to want to voice his political speech from the jail. And with that, I will play his statement. This is Ammon Bundy. Uh, I am currently in jail, solitary confinement, and I've learned that I've just been indicted. Uh, I ask the question, what are a people to do? This is what you get when government officials ignore the people. We exhausted all prudent measures to get government officials to investigate the abuses to the Hammond family. Tens of thousands of people understood injustice were taking place by government officials, and their petitions were ignored. The results of government officials ignoring the people are acts like the takeover of the Malia Refuge. Taking over the refuge was not only right, it was the duty of the people to do. When government officials are acting in contrary to the people, they must not get away with it. The takeover of the Malia Refuge was a needed action to show government officials that the people will not be complacent when they prosecute and bully good families like the Hammond. Government officials chose to end our educational efforts with attacks of force, and it appears they intend to do it again. Go home, Oregon State Police. You have already killed enough. Go home, FBI. It is time to end this. Thank you, Ammon Bundy.
here first. She's in protective custody. Far, far away from it. Well, yeah, you can. <laughs> well, I think everybody out there. Oh, that guy standing right there. Where is he? He's standing right here. Yeah, we all have. Well, here's here's my grandkid. But I was like, I'll have to read it. But I'm going to tell you right now. It's very helpful. Are you done yet? Oh, sure. Did I have any boogers on my face when you were looking at me? <laughs> yeah, I was running all the way down the teeth. He didn't get that close. I need some teeth knocked out. <laughs> Much 
A little dialogue. I don't know if it's red clay or what, but there had been some dialogue about a uh, one of the officers getting caught in their own crossfire, and alongside the road, approximately where we saw that you know, flinch, is uh, up here on the edge of the road. Looks like possibly frozen dried blood. You know, I'm just making an opinion. It might just be red clay mud. We are strong people. 
we're resilient. We don't need these people to come here and speak for us on any level. None. Go home. It's over. No, I absolutely love that the FDI are here. I love that. <laughs> Make sure to mention she was by herself, guys. I want this to go home. It's time for our community to be over. This is the bond. They can't while they're still here. They are still spreading messages of hate. They don't want to sit down and talk. They don't want a peaceful resolution. They want everyone in our community to agree with them and go to their side. We try to disagree with them. They shut them down. They intimidate I have friends that don't feel safe in their home. Some that they can't even go home because of these people, because of what they stand for and what they've done. They've ripped our community apart and it's time to end it now. But leave. We've asked them over and over. They have not been physically hurt. They have been intimidated. At this point, there has not.
don't need to be dirty. Hey, you guys, you need to tell those guys to away from your pets because it doesn't look like you can make here. I uh, know. <laughs>
All right, that's it. We'll be back in probably right around three hours or so from uh, um, Utah from, from the funeral. So thanks for tuning in.